I've covered from, from uh, being a, just a, a support and application engineer to where I am now, where managing almost uh, a third of the world in the Middle East and Africa. When you operate in Africa, you are not just having the purpose of fulfilling a job. I think I always declare it as being essential to the society because we want to connect, that's our philosophy, the unconnected. This is Tech Waves. I'm Laurelyn from Dubai World Trade Center, bringing you your ultimate tech playlist powered by JTEX from our WeWork studio. Not many would know that modern life would be impossible without our today's guests. Smartphones, televisions, aircraft, cars, millions of people all over the world use their technology every day. Their measuring instruments are critical for wireless communications, consumer electronics and automotive. Hundreds of TV transmitter stations and numerous air traffic control systems use their hardware. Digital mobile communication could only take off through their technology. This is the true invisible giant of tech. They do business in more than 70 countries worldwide, but today we are here to talk about how their technology is shaping the African continent. My guest today is Shaquille Hamed, sales director from Roden Schwartz. So let's kick off the conversation with him. Shaquille, thank you for coming today. Before we talk business, we'd like to find a little bit more about you. So where did your journey start with uh, even your career and then moving into Roden Schwartz? Fantastic question. Um, my my, my uh, career actually started in the UK. Uh, I was actually educated there and uh, came out with an uh, engineering degree with a joint honours in business uh, and then was taken on by GEC Marconi uh, Instruments uh, and actually was focused on, on, on wireless test and measurement solutions uh, from a very early age. So was your plan before you got into your career to move over to the business side of engineering or did you want to start in engineering and then move over? Okay, so um, this is now my 29th year uh, in, in the test and measurement world. Uh, I've covered uh, multiple uh, spaces, multiple environments um, and then the actual decision uh, came quite early after graduation in actual fact that I really wanted to migrate away from the R&D, the research and development uh, environment into more of a commercial uh, human interaction uh, and engagement environment. Yeah? So um, over the last uh, 29 years I've, I've worked for companies uh, actually positioning myself in probably three or four of the main continents in, in Japan, in Korea, uh, worked for, a, for another German uh, company before, worked for organizations from North America both in Canada and also in the US. Yeah. That's interesting. I guess that brings me on to a question on, on enablement and how Roden Schwartz is enabling these ecosystems to grow. Can you explain to us quickly about how you do that day to day? Okay, so um, Roden Schwartz is, has got a, a lot of diverse business units. Yeah? Um, so some of the areas that what we address today are, are uh, mobile network testing uh, as, a, as a core activity which we do from one of the business units um, but there are areas in terms of tactical communications, critical uh, communications, uh, areas of, of uh, uh, air, air traffic control um, and we also delve into the worlds of broadcast uh, and media um, through the solutions that we provide both in what we test and also the communication systems themselves as well. Thank you. Our guest today is Mr. Dirk Karl, uh, CPO, uh, so Chief Procurement Officer from the MTN Group um, and also residing board member for the global supply company um, based in Dubai. Um, today, obviously, you know, we would like to share some insights here from yourself. 
and we've actually been able to work with, with the local CTOs of each operation across the uh, MTN's 16 operations that we uh, actually audit today. Uh, we would, as you know, we'd like to do more, but a lot of those countries are under very difficult political situations at the minute. Yeah? Um, in terms of harnessing uh, the opportunity of Africa, actually entailed us to, to really put Roden Schwartz resilience to test. Like our products, in terms of we've actually done the drive test over 16 countries. Um, in those 16 countries, we had very, very few failures. In actual fact, one third party component failed over the three years that we've actually conducted the test. Yeah? Um, with, with the ongoing activity, we do see a vast improvement. Yeah? In actual fact, 40% over the first two years campaign in terms of both voice and video quality uh, and data throughput uh, 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 capability um, in the MTN networks compared to its competitors. Yeah? Um, it would be really nice to see how that quality enables MTN to deliver its core activities and some of the areas that MTN is focused on for not just for this year, but maybe for the coming five years ahead. Uh, thank you. And uh, let's put that, this result maybe into perspective what it means to us. And what it means to us, of course, in we are NPS-wise, so when you look at the customer experience, net promoter score, uh, we are number one in 12 of those markets. Absolutely. So under tough conditions, uh, under a, a rough competition as well in those markets, we have achieved to provide service excellence to our community. And um, if, if we do some sizing about MTN, because we have international uh, 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 public uh, broadcasting here, in, in order to uh, look at MTN um, from a, just a sheer, a sheer sizing, you see that we are at the moment, uh, first uh, quarter results closed and count, approximately 200 million mobile subscribers across our footprint. And we are growing fast. I think uh, when, you, when you look at the service revenue increase of 19% in the first quarter 2021, uh, you see one of the fastest growing carriers of the world. And uh, in, in the sheer size, when you look at the GSMA, uh, rating, we are probably between seven or six in terms of all international top carriers uh, in terms of size and ranking. Wonderful, wonderful. Somebody once told me that if you take the three continents of uh, America, North America, and I'm talking about here, Europe and Middle East, and you were to take that terrain and you were to implant it in Africa, we would just cover just cover the core of African territory. Yeah? With such size and such population and the technology migrations going at the speed they are, what is MTN's engagement today in terms of improving African society? Um, uh, the, the market in Africa is of course particular. And uh, if you look at the developed countries uh, versus Africa, we're still growing in voice. Right, uh, uh, because the penetration, of course, of smart phones in those markets is still a portfolio that needs to grow. So on a daily basis, our operations is, of course, engaged, trying to penetrate with more of the modern devices into these markets. Why? Because I think it's very uh, useful to point out to the audience um, that when you operate in Africa, you are not just having the purpose of fulfilling a job. I think I always declare it as being systemic to the society, essential to the society, because we want to connect, that's our philosophy, the unconnected in Africa. There's a huge potential to gain new customers by connecting them and moving them into this technology, data and voice-wise. And that sort of penetration is something uh, that comes with a purpose. It comes with a purpose, that work comes and that undertaking come, uh, comes with a purpose because you want to provide them also the advantages so they can enjoy uh, the benefits of a digital life. Uh, digital life means in for the SMEs, for the economies, of course, and for the private households to get connected, to get connected to the wider uh, world. And uh, how are you doing this? 
uh, because the ARPUs are of course for, for Africa not high. And, and still we are paying a tremendous amount, like in, in developed countries, tremendous amount of CapEx investments to roll out in that sort of huge landscape, uh, the technology. We, we are now trying and I have announced this, that we are very much into open round technology. Yes. Uh, we are deploying rural solutions. Um, and uh, we have already succeeded actually last year and this year to deploy actively 1,100 rural base stations now across uh, the markets. And we are aiming at additional 5,000 uh, uh, base stations rural wise to get connected. That's how we are trying to get into uh, regions in Africa that were so far not covered. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. Um, in terms of road and shorts, we align ourselves with the standards bodies to give a very transparent view of the network and, and the openness in terms of those measurements to provide credibility uh, to, to the CXO and, and uh, executives like yourself to understand where the network improvement needs to be. Um, what you call the, the, the net promoter score, um, we have a different NPS, it's actually called network performance score. It's actually a standardized uh, full TR documented Etsy standard, which we are looking uh, at actually working alongside uh, uh, Etsy uh, to make sure that each uh, executive in positions of decisions like yourself are actually able to make the right balanced decision in terms of investment versus feature versus capability of network. Yeah? In the world of Africa today, as the young entrepreneurial uh, uh, hardworking individuals are going to market, they want to actually have uh, the, the, the same level of credibility as any European or North American subscriber would have of the network. Yeah? Let's focus on terms of where MTN has actually really added value uh, in the local society today. Could you just share some insights in terms of that environment from yourself? I, I think you raised an important point, uh, uh, particularly looking at emerging markets, Africa. When, when you see the regulations, when you see the regulatory bodies in the telecommunication industry in Africa, then you sure do have the worldwide standards being sure. imposed on us. Uh, so it's, 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 it's in, in that term, not a third world in yeah. terms of the technology uh, uh, approach, not at all. It meets the international standards. Um, in uh, in uh, respect what MTN has so far delivered uh, uh, in with the uh, with uh, let's say sailing sailing the COVID crisis, mm -hmm. trying to keep the economies up and running because people needed schools, hospitals, households, uh, industries needed to have connectivity, and uh, on top. I always give examples in terms of how you develop societies. Of course, uh, we know banks and financial institution, the financial industry is, uh, is a facilitator of economical growth. And uh, with our fintech platform, with our mobile money uh, uh, applications, we're having now almost 40 million of uh, active subscribers who do transaction free mobile money transactions with the phone. So it can even be a 2G phone to wire money from, let's say, urban areas into rural areas or even receiving international payments, cash payments onto their mobile money wallet. Uh, that's one part. But I, I come back to something which even more impressed me. And that comes back to how, f how leading edge we are also in those, uh, let's say, African uh, countries. Um, I'll, I'll give you the example of a company called Sipline. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and Sipline in Zambia is, having a, bar, is, a, is a drone company. Um, and we are providing the connectivity for those drones. And it's about serving, at least they have, let's say, 100 takeoffs of drones across Zambia each day from there, call it drones airport, mm -hmm. zip line, using our connectivity, using our 
uh, uh, network in order to uh, manage and, and, and uh, uh, manage those drones in the air. And what are they doing? Um, I think in, in those, to get to those rural areas, to get to those hospitals, it's quite an undertaking. And medication, vaccines, or critical blood, actually, uh, uh, deliveries um, are, are, are hard to transport uh, across Zambia. And, and, and this is a business model uh, that is uh, a proof how, how we can, uh, with technology, with the mobile technology, improve the life of others. And uh, now with 100 starts a day in Zambia, we're, uh, with this company, uh, blood uh, is delivered to hospitals, mm -hmm. uh, a medication to pharmacies, and it's being dropped out of the sky, and the drone basically comes back to the airport. Understood. This is an, a prime example about having, having more uh, uh, as a purpose to society than just providing the connectivity. Wonderful, wonderful. Good to hear, good to hear. Um, in the scenario, we know that Africa, in terms of some of the countries, each of the countries, it is a various stage of technology uh, from both the end subscriber usage and also the network provisioning aspect of it. We at Roden Schwartz, for example, we've worked with the standards bodies to, to actually focus on the development of 5G and the migration to 5G. Uh, and actually the, the enablement, not just purely for, uh, for usage in terms of from a subscriber perspective, but also true interactivity, for example, you know, online gaming, uh, cloud-based games and uh, cloud-based videos. Um, so it's an area of focus uh, for, for us very much in terms of migrating our footpath towards the future. In terms of MTN, I know there are multiple environments that, that you guys play in. What are your challenges in terms of migrating from in some of the countries where we're still operating in 2G environments and other countries like South Africa are already encompassing the 5G uh, storyline? Uh, yeah, you have uh, quite a, a diversification in the portfolio mm -hmm. in terms of te uh, technology differences between legacy and front running. And as, as you already mentioned, uh, you look at Nigeria or you look at uh, South Africa, um, you see, of course, a front-running 5G environment. So That's we right. even now have broadband delivery with, uh, with, a, with a startup of unlicensed spectrum broadband-wise uh, 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 that gives us for the households uh, a, a geek connectivity. Um, th this is front-running. Um, also on, on, on 5G, of course, uh, where we still need to get the spectrum, of course, awarded. Um, but on, on top of 2G and 3G legacy and how we are going to transform this, I think it is all a, a capability topic mm -hmm. about the handsets out there. Right. right? Uh, because uh, you, you can easily say uh, you are going to provide voice over 4G. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it, those are voltic calls. Exactly. And in order to get the voltic calls to a quality of 2G uninterrupted, you need to invest a lot, a lot in terms of data uh, sure. penetration in, in, in rooms, buildings, and also in terms of the, the sheer landscape uh, size. So um, still, uh, uh, it's, it's the device market, the terminals market that's lacking behind not in terms of can they deliver, but affordability in Africa. So uh, we are still in, in, in with joint venture partners developing smart feature phones mm -hmm. uh, uh, with different operating systems in order to avoid too much of licensing cost on the device to make handsets affordable for the African continent. And, and, and there we still need to have, uh, let's say a GSM uh, 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 technology and maybe uh, uh, there could be a discussion about 3G and 4G, but ultimately you're cutting off people who have not been migrated to other devices. Absolutely. Which uh, uh, at the moment, as I said, in Africa, we're still growing on voice. Absolutely. Substantially. No, no. For sure. And then we, we, we actually enjoy the, the, what you're saying to us because in terms of our 
establishment into if I look at the focus areas where road and shores away from the mobile network testing environment but we we've, we've uh, invested like an incubation center for example in Rwanda where they are now uh, going through the production and pre-production activity we are intrinsically involved in those incubation centers to enhance uh, that process of releasing cost-effective smart handsets, which the market very much needs. Yeah? Uh, and, and today, obviously, we're talking about the smart network. Uh, from our perspective, we have a portfolio based on, on the smart brand. Um, but tomorrow, we are obviously looking to enhance and encapsulate um, our end customers who are hopefully going to be very smart in terms of their needs and their requirements. You know? Moving on to the world of fintech, moving on to the world of mobile money, where do you see this market going from MTN's perspective? It's a success story. It's a success, it's a success, success story. story I think uh, some, uh, sometimes we always say, you can also say uh, Africa's biggest bank uh, uh, and the ambition is still growing, mm -hmm. uh, substantially growing in terms of uh, mobile money user. It's a success story uh, uh, where we have already announced Ambition 2025 of MTN uh, to create platforms, uh, separate platforms uh, uh, across our, our group where FinTech is one of those digital platforms. And uh, uh, this is a wide spectrum of offerings that are needed. So it's not only the, the financial transaction of uh, money transfers, but it is also microfinancing. It is also partnerships with insurance companies. So it's 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 around, uh, 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 let's say, a fintech approach, uh, diversification of the financial instruments, but also uh, data analytics. Yeah, because if you have, of course, such sort of large. Uh, uh, a customer base across the market, you can do a lot in terms of credit scores. Uh, credit scores for Africa are scars in terms of credit bureau information, etc. So that is also a big contribution, I think, at the later stage for developing economies in, in Africa and also uh, the financial markets. Notwithstanding, of course, as a, as a carrier, uh, we do have also own platforms, OTT messaging platforms. One of them is IOBA, uh, where we are competing uh, against the likes of Telegram, uh, uh, against the likes of WhatsApp. Um, and we are, we are trying to have a unique uh, uh, selling point, of course. And, and that unique differentiator is that we are trying to do a music store. We are, we are having a messaging platform in order to provide local content. Um, I think uh, Africa gets, of course, the, uh, the, the Hollywood movies. Uh, 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 they, are, they get the blockbusters, but they also want to see, of course, African content, content yeah. right? And uh, uh, with, with our messaging platform, um, this is an expansion where you can see that we are uh, uh, providing uh, lots of African languages and dialects in the messaging platform. If you use it, it's, it's free. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you need to use data over the MTN uh, network uh, and you're using, uh, of course, locked in into an MTN network, you get that data free mm -hmm. for using the messaging platform. And then it's also a, a view in terms of how we are going to merge a messaging platform with a wallet, a financial wallet, a mobile money wallet uh, uh, in there as well in order to do transactions. Um, and also for music time, you know, Africa lives from music. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And, and there's a lot of local uh, content that might not get uh, uploaded to the international developed Indeed. famous ones. And we want to cater for that sort of platform as well. Another contribution for Africa. Sure. No, that's fascinating because obviously if you look at markets like Nigeria, you've got a whole movie industry, uh, Nollywood, in terms of the way it's actually focused. From that perspective, I think in terms of a, from a partnership view, we are currently going through a, a, a product release of how we manage this uh, video uh, multi-broadcast or, or, or I would say IPTV environment and how we enhance that over transmission on a 4G or a 5G network. Compression, you know, yes. On a streaming. compression streaming yes. basis. You know? So 
absolutely the, the, the needs are there, uh, the challenges are there. Dirk, thank you so much for your time. Thank really you for the invite. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Okay, can you tell me exactly how Roden Schwartz is shaping the continent of Africa? So, in terms of our engagements with Africa, it's been predominantly over uh, almost 20 years now. Um, we initially uh, entered the, the, the African market through our portfolio and our transmitters from our broadcast division. Yeah. Um, our core competency has always been test and measurement, so we provide all sorts of test environments for both uh, broadcast industry, for the mobile network industry, and moving into critical communications and, and secure communication environments as well. Yeah. What is it that made Africa such a critical part of your strategy? Africa, um, as you can imagine from our guest earlier, that you've seen in terms of the growth, in terms of sus subscriber rate, the opportunity that actually exists for us, uh, because individuals from Europe are no longer just asking for a particular uh, quality of network and the resilience of that network. We have people, entrepreneurs uh, from Africa, uh, who are also very much engaged in today's environment and want exactly what their counterparts in either North America or Europe are receiving in terms of the quality network infrastructure and also the resilience of their devices uh, and, and the access to, to the applications and the technology which actually exists today in order to make their world a better place. Is it the profile of Africa um, which has driven Roden Schwartz to go into fintech and mobile money? Sure. Um, as you heard from our guests earlier on, from what Dirk was saying, uh, the subscriber base is huge. The opportunity uh, for any organization in Africa is, is, is a massive one. Yeah? Especially for, for, for people like Roden Schwartz, we are actually addressing the area of mobile network technology today. We also test the environment in terms of, from a, from a, from a device perspective, of making an affordable device, smart device, which individuals in Africa can use. And we're actually helping governments uh, through the regulatory bodies in order to understand the frameworks which they need to adhere to. So if I can just approach those particular three areas in, in a little bit more detail for you, from a, a, a regulatory perspective, a regulator needs to understand its value worth in terms of the spectrum it has and what monetary income it actually can gain from the operator itself. It then has to manage the operator in delivering uh, uh, quality services and a quality network to the maximum reach of its population. From an operator perspective, they find it a challenge in terms of determining uh, twofold. First of all, they have to meet the regulatory requirement, which we help them to do through our test environments, uh, through using you know, our service, our managed services programs, or our solutions. And then on, on top of that, we have uh, equipment which tests the actual smart devices and actually approves them for the marketplace. Yeah? And the second aspect from the mobile operator perspective is that it needs to report to the regulatory authorities in terms of what it's doing on a regular basis and internally from an audit perspective they need to understand where they stand today and what services that their network is able to deliver for tomorrow. We do that through our capability or what we call the network performance scoring methodology. It is based around the Etsy uh, standards, mm -hmm. uh, fully compliant and fully adhered to by, by Roden Schwartz. Um, our competitive environment in this area has always provisioned proprietary reporting inf uh, structure, whereas we are actually providing a very much a more uh, a, a transparent model um, and an open book policy in terms of what the real environment is, how the real problems are actually occurring in the network, and giving the operator some uh, real recommendations in terms of how the quality of service can be improved. Roden Schwartz are doing so much to boost societies across emerging markets. Can you share a few concrete examples of projects that have really improved people's lives? Okay, so um, as we can see, as I said, you know, the, 
as, as Africa comes with its challenges, it also comes with its opportunities. So we've, we've, held, uh, we've held in countries like, for example, uh, Kenya, uh, we, we helped the government um, govern the operators in terms of the solutions and, and somewhat the, the framework model which they need to uh, test the networks with uh, to provision a very independent view of what's going on in order to improve uh, the quality of service and the quality of coverage in the area. Yeah? Uh, we, if we take, uh, for example, Rwanda, Rwanda is actually an incubation center for, for, for Roden Schwartz where we are assisting and we are impacting that environment to create Africa's first mobile phone. Yeah? It's a fully owned uh, uh, smartphone which is actually designed, developed and manufactured uh, in Africa. If we look at, for example, just uh, uh, slightly uh, west of that, I mean, uh, we, we spoke about uh, the mobile money environment with MTN. This market space is growing, yeah? So the resilience uh, of the network is very crucial to the society which uses it, yeah? We as Roden Schwartz, yeah, uh, power uh, the, the, the quality power the measurements, yeah, which make the CXOs, like Dirk Carl, uh, make the right decisions in terms of investing in their networks in the right areas in order to provide the end subscriber with the right level of experience. JTEX, AI Everything, JTEX Future Star, Future Blockchain Summit, Fintech Surge and Marketing Mania, the biggest tech show of the year from the 17th to 21st of October at Dubai World Trade Center. Year 2021 is a big celebration for UAE, celebrating 50 years of their existence, plus hosting two of the most powerful shows in the world, Jitex and Expo 2020 Dubai. <laughs>